Okay, this lecture is diabetes, hypertension, and capillary basement membrane thickening. Is it a big deal? Yes, of course it is. Okay, um, <clears throat> this slide is kind of busy and complicated. I'll just introduce you to it real fast, and then we'll explain more what it means. So we'll go back over the same slide later in the talk, because it's I know it's a little complicated, but this is super important, and understanding this helps you to prevent dementia and a lot of other problems. Okay, so first of all, this is a normal capillary, the one on top, and this is an abnormal capillary. Uh, a couple big differences here. The capillary basement membrane, which is on the outer surface, let's say the capillary is like a tubular cylinder, on its outer surface it has a basement membrane. This is the endothelial cell, which lines the capillary. Um, these are red blood cells. Red blood cells, when they go through the capillary, they have to deform. Instead of being their total discoid, they have to bend to go through. So they're bending as they go through. The little blue circles are the oxygen. So on a normal functioning capillary, it's delivering a lot of oxygen. The hemoglobin is releasing it, and it then diffuses over to the neuron. So here's a neuron cell body. Here's a neuron axon, the synapse, and whatnot. Okay, and then down below is an abnormal capillary. It has a thickened basement membrane due to the diabetes or due to hypertension. And the key point is, notice how there's lots of blue stuff up here coming off of a normal capillary. But when this capillary basement membrane is thickened, less oxygen is able to diffuse through it. The rate of oxygen delivery to the neuron is diminished, okay? So you can see how this is one more problem that adds up to uh, causing damage to your brain cells. And it causes damage to cells in other locations in your body, but the brain cells are most sensitive to uh, deprivation of oxygen. And I remember my last talk, I talked about the chronic disease being like a protein folding probability funnel, whereby progressively uh, the health of the body is sort of driven down and it becomes harder and harder to climb back up. Like I had that picture of Sadak in search of the waters of oblivion of forgetting. Okay, so that's the point here. The more time goes by with chronic hypertension and chronic diabetes, the thicker gets this capillary basement membrane and the more difficult it gets to deliver oxygen to these neurons. And that's what I mean by don't mess around. Consider it a blessing that you still got your brain and you can think and protect your brain cells by giving them a healthy diet, avoiding toxins, Otherwise, you end up with this progressive stepwise loss of neurons. They go to uh, hypoxia-induced program cell death called apoptosis. Okay, I'll show some more slides, uh, give you the background, make more sense of this, and then we'll come back to the same picture. Okay, just one sec. It's taking me a moment with the slide here. I get it. Okay, here's going to be a look at the normal anatomy. So this is a much better drawing than what I can do. Um, so here's a capillary. Here's the capillary lining cells. They're called endothelial cells. And they encircle the capillary. In the brain and around nerves, you'll see what's called a pericyte. Um, kind of like a smooth muscle cell. You can think of it that way. Here's the basement membrane, which sort of uh, circumferentially outlines the contour of the capillary. And this is, gets markedly thickened with diabetes, and it also gets thickened with hypertension. So here it is of a side view, and one can see the endothelial cells here, tight junctions between the endothelial cells for a blood nerve barrier, blood brain barrier, for example. And then here's the basement membrane that in particular gets thickened. And here's the pericyte, kind of like a smooth muscle cell. Um, and then oxygen has to get out of this capillary and diffuse to the neurons of the brain. Okay, one sec, I gotta get this slide here. Okay, here's just uh, the first article about uh, doing biopsies to show what the capillaries look like in insulin dependent, di oh, in, in diabetes. All right, here's what it says. Thickening and proliferation of capillary basement membrane is a generalized phenomenon in diabetes and has been described in many organs, including the heart, the kidney, the pancreas, the retina, et cetera. Okay, so, I'm sort of showing you that this is a big diffuse problem and it's not going away. Only thing you can do is you can prevent it. Stop eating all that fat. Okay, so uh, here's another article and this one's going to talk about the same thing. This one's in hypertension. 
in almost all hypertensive subjects. A reduction in lumen and an increase in media to lumen ratio, thickening of the wall of the artery. Um, there's increased collagen, fibrotic scar tissue laid down around the arterial wall. And about 60% of hypertensive patients exhibit endothelial dysfunction. Yeah, what causes endothelial dysfunction? Sodium, saturated fat, and a few other things. So, Now here's another article that's going to talk about the same sort of thing. Capillary basement membrane thickening. And here it is. CBM, capillary basement membrane thickening, is triggered by several physical factors, including diabetes-associated glycation, you know, those advanced glycation end products associated with insulin resistance, hydrostatic pressure. And this is another thing. If you've got a lot of insulin resistance, you can be damaging your body even if your blood glucose level isn't that high. You don't want elevated insulin resistance. Okay, um, and inflammation. Well, gee, isn't that something? Those are three things that meat does. Meat-related fat causes insulin resistance to diabetes. Meat-related fat and the sodium that usually goes with it cause hydrostatic pressure, increased blood pressure. And meat-related problems like postprandial endotoxemia, for example, xenocyelitis, for example, they cause inflammation. All of these things are damaging your arterial walls, which over time make you less able to adequately deliver oxygen to your tissues. And that's a biggest deal in your brain. Your brain's the most sensitive thing, and especially the memory center, the hippocampus. You know, the CA1 neurons are your hippocampus. They are very sensitive to hypoxia, lack of oxygen delivery. A thickened capillary basement membrane obviously poses a greater barrier for diffusion, and it lowers. Uh, the microvascular elasticity, and here's a key point, impedes transcytosis of inflammatory cells. Yes, it immunosuppresses you. How can your, immunos your immune system function as effectively when it's struggling to get across this scarred, thickened capillary basement membrane? And that, that's kind of my point where you see these old people, they're sort of slowly going downhill, and then... <coughs> Then they sort of rapidly start to crash and burn, and it's very hard to turn anything around. And this is the point I'm making. If you've trashed all your capillaries, you're going to have a hard time ever restoring brain function, okay? And that's why usually by the time it's clinically obvious that a patient's, you know, noticeably, significantly cognitively impaired, it's very difficult to turn them around, okay? And this is another motivator. I don't want to eat anything or do anything that's going to decrease my brain function, okay? I've seen a lot of people lose it. I see them lose it every day. Okay, so what's this all about? Again, just a summary slide here. When the capillary basement membrane is thickened, oxygen delivery to the tissues is decreased. And we know that hypertension, super common, and diabetes, super common, they both damage the capillary basement membrane and make it thickened. So they both decrease oxygen delivery to the tissues. And then you superimpose on that the high fat meal with low formation, blood sludge effect. You superimpose upon that vasoconstriction from sodium. You superimpose upon that elevated metabolic rate in those neurons from eating uh, MSG, MFG, aspartame. Then you increase the metabolic rate because of psychological stress, sleep deprivation, drinking caffeine. You see how you're ramping up that metabolic rate of those neurons while you're dropping the oxygen glucose delivery on a chronic basis. Eventually the neuron says, I just can't handle this. Program cell death, apoptosis. Okay, you decrease oxygen delivery to your tissue means Muscles have less energy. Heart has less energy. Your exercise capacity is diminished. The brain neurons getting less energy like we just talked about and then go into apoptosis, program cell death. The more neurons you leave, you lose, eventually you end up in cognitive decline. Like whenever I hear, you know, old, old patient falls, you know, getting a head CT, you know, twice within six months because of falling down. To me, that means almost always that guy's demented. I think I said this before, but I have a friend who was a neurologist, ran a... Um, a fall clinic, and they, she said it was kind of a waste of time. I mean, it was a dementia clinic. The same patients that fall a lot, they're demented. The brain's mostly for movement more so than thick, uh, thinking. Okay, so got a couple more slides here. We're almost done. So just another paper, vascular remodeling, you know, of the arterial wall in hypertension. Endothelium, which is sort of the opposite of what you want, nitrous oxide, is activated with hypertension and with... Um, especially like sodium hypertension related. Let's see here. Uh, thus, when the renin antrid system is even mildly activated, primary essential hypertension, uh, remodeling is usually eutrophic, in salt dependent hypertension and diabetes, all conditions in which endothelial system is activated, 
Remodeling is hypertrophic, thickening of the arterial wall. There's also hyperplasia of the vascular smooth muscles, and I showed, I'm going to show that in that picture as well. Here's just one article again. This one's about diabetes and its effect on the blood nerve barrier. So this is like a peripheral nerve. The layer, outer layer is called, you know, endoneural. Okay, the microvessels, basement membrane thickening around microvessels around a nerve is the most notable pathological abnormality in diabetic neuropathy. DN is for diabetic neuropathy. And may result in microcirculatory disturbances leading to tissue hypoxia. So there's the key word, tissue hypoxia. So diabetic neuropathy is partly ischemic, meaning due to lack of blood flow. Diabetic endoneural hypoxia has been corroborated by the finding of reduced oxygen tension. That's what we've been talking about. You thicken that uh, capillary base of membrane, it's harder to get oxygen to your tissues. And then you uh, elevation, a hypoxic inducible factor, and you basically, you damage the neuron, okay? And they call the damage to these small uh, capillaries microangiopathy of diabetes or microvascular disease of diabetes. Okay, now we come back to the slide, and I think it's going to make more uh, sense now. So here is the capillary, capillary right here. Here's the basement membrane, the yellow line. Here's the endothelial cells that line the wall of the artery. The basement membrane is just outside the endothelial cells. Here's the blood flow by the big red arrow. Here's the red blood cells delivering all this oxygen, like a big delivery truck, delivering all the blue, which is the wonderful oxygen, gives this neuron all its energy to do everything it needs to do. And now here's the abnormal damaged uh, capillary by diabetes and hypertension. So the thickened basement membrane is the most important feature for our purposes. Notice how these normal uh, red blood cells are delivering lots of oxygen to this neuron. Notice how much less oxygen is able to get up to the neuron from because it has to go through this thick basement membrane, thick wall, which is going to be scarred with collagen, fibronectin. I drew the vascular smooth muscles in here on this for the sake of the purpose of showing them, but they're more of an issue in uh, arterioles, bigger vessels than in the capillary, of course. But you're getting the point. It's hard for oxygen to get through this thickened wall with scar tissue and to supply oxygen and glucose to these neurons. So the more of this wall thickening that's occurring, the less oxygen and glucose getting delivered to these neurons and the more neurons are going to die through inability to meet their metabolic demands, programmed cell death, apoptosis, and the person's going to progressively lose cognitive function, cognitively impaired, memory loss, dementia.